News Channel 5 On Your Side presents Kaleidoscope, focusing on people who make a difference in Northeast Ohio communities. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Women of Color Foundation continues its dialogue series for women in leadership on Thursday, June the 11th. Chairwoman Alexandria Johnson Boone and Cleveland Clinic Deputy Chief Legal Officer Michelle Johnson Tijani are here to explain how you can participate. Later on, we'll hear from the Cuyahoga County juvenile judge himself and author Michael Ryan, who will share his life story with us. It is quite a story, I guarantee. And on the broadcast after that, General Manager of the Call and Post, Kevin Hurd, and staff reporter Rhonda Crowder will tell us how they and the rest of the Call and Post plan to celebrate the 100th anniversary of this local newspaper. Good morning, everyone. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope, and so we begin, beginning with Alexandria Boone, founder and chairwoman of Women of Color Foundation. She's seated right next to me, and next to her is Michelle Johnson Tajani, chief legal officer, deputy chief legal officer at Cleveland Clinic. Good to have you both with us. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Alex, you've done it again. You've got the Women of Color Foundation has another big event. First off, tell us about the Women of Color Foundation. Well, we were founded, um, we're going on our 14th year next year. In fact, we have a, a 15th anniversary in 2017, so we're really excited. Mm -hmm. And we were just founded to uh, provide leadership development and educational programs for women and girls of all colors. Uh -huh. And you've got a big event coming up. We do, and thankfully Michelle has agreed to be our keynote speaker. She is phenomenal. And um, it's so funny because uh, when we talked about talked to Michelle about coming on as our keynote speaker, she accepted mm -hmm. right away, and I was so glad because I wanted someone at her level and her uh, her caliber to be our keynote speaker for the event at Dominion. Yeah, why That's do so you kind. do this, Michelle? What is it about about the Women of Color Foundation? What is well, it that, I will that tell you, you bring to us? That the energy and passion that Alex devote to, devotes to it herself uh, is quite phenomenal and inspiring, and I think it's important for women to support other women um, with this particular event, uh, it gives I think me a chance to share a story that I hope resonates with other uh, young women and older women alike from various parts of Cleveland and across the country. I think I think it's important for women to talk about their successes mm -hmm. and failures mm -hmm. so that we all have an opportunity to learn. Yeah, so all of this that. inspires women to it absolutely in, does. into those leadership positions. Absolutely. Kind of position you and and, and, and Alexandria both have. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, and I think it's important. If, if, if you could point out life lessons that you've had and be able to share in a really authentic way with others, I think there's value, especially for women. Yeah. We're going to put a phone number on the screen where you can get more information on everything that we're talking about. That, and that phone is 216-391-4300 and touch extension 307. It's all on the screen right there. You might want to write that down. Uh, this is important for you. This is part of your life's work, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It's my passion and my ministry. And one, one of the things that Michelle just said about how people look at us and they think oh my god I want to be like that person one day but they don't realize we were like them mm -hmm. at their age mm -hmm. and their, their station in life and so that you know we all had a struggle coming up mm -hmm. the we, truth? we didn't just wake up and mm -hmm. she didn't wake up as deputy chief mm -hmm. legal officer at mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic mm -hmm. and you didn't wake up running this no I did not <laughs> you and I knew each other as children okay. we've known each other since kindergarten Sunday school, right. kindergarten. Sunday school. Okay. Right. Kindergarten. so we, we were kids but right. we grew up and got mm -hmm. educated and did right. the things that we needed to do mm -hmm. to stay out of trouble Mm -hmm. Exactly. To do what's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, a young woman, I was at a conference last year with Michelle, I mean, last week with mm -hmm. Michelle, mm -hmm. and a young lady said, You know, people talk about their dreams, and she says, Stop dreaming, do the work. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, That's to true. me, that really resonated with me. You know, mm -hmm. you, can, you can achieve your goals and your dreams, but you got to do the work. Absolutely. Now, where are you holding this event? It's going to be at Dominion, East Ohio, at their F East 55th Street office at 1201 East 55th Street, and it's right at um, South Marginal Road, uh -huh. East 55th. So it's mm -hmm. very easy to find. Free parking. Uh, it's free. The event itself is free, mm -hmm. and we're going to provide a free lunch. So, but you have to register in advance. But you've got to register. Gotta don't register. just come knocking on the door. Please don't try, show up. Trying to get up because you, you, it's going to be can. a big crowd to, yes, to get in. So can. how do people get registered? Well, they can call 391-4300, extension 307, mm -hmm. and that's our registration hotline. Mm -hmm. And we ask them not to leave a, a paragraph. When they call, just leave their phone number and their name, yeah. and we will register them <laughs> automatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's uh, it's going to be a great event, and they really do want to hear what Michelle's story is. Yeah, and Michelle, you're going to tell a little, little bit about that story. Tell us about this story that you're going to t 
hotel on Thursday, June uh, 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 June 11th right. at 11.30 sure. in the morning. You know, I hope to just share a little bit about my experience. Um, as many people who know me uh, well know, I'm originally from Detroit, but I am a Cleveland Clevelander mm -hmm. at this juncture. Mm -hmm. I have been here about 10 years and had a fantastic uh, opportunity with the Cleveland Clinic um, here. Um, you know, it hadn't always been rosy, right? I grew up uh, with my mom, who was devoted as a parent and probably the single most influential person in my life. Mm -hmm. um, had great teachers, but a product of Detroit Public Schools. And so that's a proud story for me, I think, because there's so many negative things you often hear about urban school districts. Mm -hmm. And I think I had a great education, a great experience, and then had the opportunity to go off to an Ivy League school. And that was unique for my community and for my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then I came back home to go to law school and began uh, my career. Career, which, you know, I mean, it um, started off, I never thought I would be a healthcare lawyer, <laughs> and uh, had a great opportunity right out, out of law school to practice with a firm who did a great deal of work in that area, and that has sort of propelled my yeah. career. And now you're the Deputy Chief Legal Officer at Cleveland Clinic. That's right. Quite a position. We're very proud Quite of what you do. Oh, very you. proud of the clinic as well, but very oh. proud of what you do over at the clinic. Yeah. That's, what it's all, that's what it's all about, that's Alexandria, what it's all about. And is people, telling these kinds of stories. Telling these mm -hmm. stories and letting mm -hmm. people see what women of color are really doing. Mm -hmm. Now, men can show up to this thing as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. they may. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do not discriminate. Because Absolutely. we want the men to, 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 to get educated and do the right things and, as and, well. And, and right. they need it. Yeah. So, yes, we would be happy to have don't, it. Don't we all need it? Right. Well, many thanks. <laughs> we'll, we'll look forward to it. It's going to be uh, June the 11th, which right. is a Thursday at 11.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be at the uh, Dominion East Ohio facility at 1201 East 55th Street. Right. That's right at North Marginal Road and East 55th Street on the northeast side right. of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. not, not too far from St. Clair Avenue. Exactly. Exactly. So if you call uh, that phone number that we put on the screen, 216-391-4300, extension 307, you can get more information. Thank right. you, ladies, for being on the oh, broadcast. Thank you for having us, Leon. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate you. wish you both well. Thank I'm you. I'm going to take a break, but in a moment, we'll be back with a Cuyahoga County juvenile court judge who shares his life story. It is quite a life story as well, as you shall see after we do this first. Welcome back to Morph Kaleidoscope. Good to have you with us today. Cuyahoga County Juvenile Court Judge Michael Ryan is here with me, and he's here to talk about his book entitled The Least Likely, The Memoirs of Judge Michael Ryan. Good to have you with us, Judge. Thank you. Yeah, Thank how are things you, yeah. going over at Juvenile Court in Cuyahoga County? Uh, too busy. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've said that too often when people ask me, you know, how are things going yeah. over at the court? Um, but we're, we're trying to make uh, a change, effective yeah. change in the lives of kids and families that come through the court. You see a lot of kids come in that got problems. Yes, I do. And um, parents as well. Um, and we try to find a way to formulate um, solutions to help those families and families yeah. grow. Yeah, yeah. I know you're here to really talk about your book. We're going to talk about a bunch of things here in the next few minutes or so. Your book, The Least Likely, The Memoirs of Judge Michael Ryan. Why would you call it The Least Likely? Uh, because uh, based on all of the cir circumstances that I had gone through, the challenges that I had met, I was the least likely to be in the position of a judge uh, for any um, type of jurisdiction, be it the Cleveland Municipal Court judge, Cuyahoga County, County yeah. Court judge. Um, you know, m my life was um, completely opposite of what you would think for someone who actually rises this type of uh, position. Uh, I wasn't um, the most likely person yeah. uh, to be a lawyer, let alone a judge, uh, based on my uh, my family situation. You told me you went to a whole bunch of schools I in the sure Cleveland did. area, a bunch of them. Yes, uh, a, a number of schools. Uh, in fact, um, 10, well actually, no, let me take that back, um, from first, Kindergarten, I was in Cleveland Public Schools, but then we left, moved to California. I was there in first grade, came back home. So from second grade to 10th grade, I was in uh, probably nine different mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. could, you, different could you have gone the wrong way I, easily? I, I could have. I had you could every, have been in trouble. I could I had every opportunity to. Uh, a lot of people were trying to pull me in the wrong direction from the time I was five years old until I was, um, I want to say, about 16, 17 years old. Uh, be because of the, the environment that, that I was growing up in, a lot of the kids I knew were involved in gangs, selling drugs. Um, but I decided, you know, that path was not the path for me. I knew that would not be a path of success, but instead one.
amount of destruction. And so I chose to do something different. Mm -hmm. Did you realize you had to walk sometimes by yourself? Yes. To get away from the, getting away from the, 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 the crazy crowd? And I didn't mind. I didn't mind being unique and different from uh, my friends or associates because I knew that that uniqueness would make me um, something yeah of a success as opposed to somebody who was you know spending time in, in prison or the juvenile right. court where I you know are currently right. um, preside now do you when 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 young free people come and stand before you in Cuyahoga County Juvenile Court do you sometimes see yourself in a way or in them and and try to t t tell them how you Michael turned it around and how they can turn their lives around I, I do that quite often. In fact, my uh, employees, my clerks, my bailiff, they probably know my story uh, better than I do because I, I'm not hesitant to talk to the kids uh, and their families about the challenges that I faced and the fact that, you know, I tell them, you're just like me. I, I was you not too long ago. I, I had a choice to make. But, and I made the choice that was going to help save my life and not one that would ruin my life. Mm -hmm. Some of them listen. Some of them are really uh, attentive, and they take that in, in stride. But then there are kids who decide, you know, I'm not listening to the judge. Yeah. I'm hardened in the way that, uh, or my philosophy and perspective, and they, they, go, they go the wrong yeah. way. Where can we find the book, The Least Likely, The Memoirs of Judge Michael Ryan? Where can we find <clears throat> this book? Several places. Um, I actually created a website, um, and it's uh, www.theleastlikelyjudgemichaelryan.com. Dot com, mm -hmm. or you can go to Amazon.com. It's right. available there as well. It's it's a wonderful read about how a kid who came up the way you came up, and where 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 where, where do you call home? I mean, your your childhood home. Which one have you selected out of all those places that you live? Longwood, uh, Longwood? Longwood Projects, mm -hmm. um, which is now Arbor Park. Yeah, uh, completely different um, environment now, um, but when when I was there. That's where uh, I really grew up. That's where I met a lot of the challenges in my life. I was able to overcome those, and I really focused on my education when I was there because, you know, home was it was just so uh, so deteriorating, and 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 there was so much turmoil there mm -hmm. that um, my school became my refuge when I was in, in Longwood. When did you know that you wanted to go into the law? When did you know that you wanted to go to college and become educated? I knew I wanted to go to college uh, probably uh, when I was in sixth grade. Mr. Bruce Hill is the person who kind of, um, you know, directed me there and said, you have the ability to be able to do well in college. And so I was to, uh, to really focused there in sixth grade. But it wasn't until I got to college that I was really interested in law. Uh, in fact, I went to college for the purpose of becoming a teacher. Um, however, they terminated the um, five-year program to get yeah. your master's and teacher certificate. And I took a class called Civil Liberties, and that's when I developed this passion for the law. But before then, I had an, uh, an aversion to, to the law because yeah. I saw so many of my family members being taken to jail. <clears throat> that was my only interaction with the court, and so I didn't want to be a lawyer. But when I got to college, I found that the law really helps people, and so that changed my perspective. And you continue with that philosophy right now? I sure trying do. trying to help those kids, even though they may be in trouble to stand before you, you try and help them get them on the right track. Ultimately, I tell them this, my job is to make sure that you don't come back through those doors. And whatever I have to do, I'm going to do it to ensure that you become a productive member in this community. I said, I've got you until you're 21 most of the time. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, at some point we have to release you. I says, but during that time frame, I'm going to do everything possible to build you up and to ensure that you are productive and that you reach your full potential. Thank you for being on the broadcast, Judge Michael Ryan of Juvenile Court here in Cuyahoga County. Good to see you, my friend. Good you Always too, good to see you. We're on the programs myself. together all the time. Yes, we are. Good to see you. Good to see you again. It's a wonderful read. The name of the book is The Least Likely, The Memoirs of Judge Michael Ryan. I'm going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with more of Kaleidoscope, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Cleveland Call and Post newspaper. After this. You are in touch with Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb. Glad to have you aboard. One local newspaper is celebrating its 100th anniversary. General Manager Kevin Hurd and staff reporter Rhonda Kraut are here to share the history and the story of the Cleveland Call and Post newspaper and its future 
in the newspaper business. Good to have you with us. Rhonda Crowder seated next to me. Kevin Hurd seated over there. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. Let's start with you, Kevin. You're general manager. I trust things are going well at the call. Thank, post. Things, thank you. Things are going very well. Uh, the staff has pulled together. You know, we lost an icon Connie in Harper. Connie Harper, but we've been supplied to foundation uh, to keep moving, keep going, and it, it, it's our journey, our love, and our passion yeah. to keep this paper going. You're celebrating 100 Years Next year, 2016, will be our centennial. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact has the Call and Post had on, on, on the communities that it serves? Well, the community is a part of the paper, and the paper is a part of the community. We are, we are one. We're an advocate for the community. It, we seek to educate and entertain the community. And there has not been uh, a community in the Cleveland area that has not been touched in some way by the Call and Pulse for the last 100 years. We're an integral mm -hmm. part of Cleveland yeah. and throughout Ohio. Yeah, Rhonda, you, you're, you're a staff reporter over the call and post. Yes. What do you think about when, when, when you go about reporting on the, on the stories that, that you cover? What, what do you keep in mind? That is necessary. That is um, information that our people need to know about. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing is um, that we have to get this information to our people because yeah. otherwise they wouldn't know. What do you think is the role of a newspaper in a black community? It's definitely um, providing information, but it's also being an advocate for uh, those issues, you know, and, and taking on those issues that's plaguing our community, um, being a voice, telling mm -hmm. stories that wouldn't necessarily yeah. be told in mainstream media. Yeah, that does not often get told. That that's how it got started, right? 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 That Kevin? is that is how the the black newspaper in itself, especially the Call and Post, got started in uh, 1916 with Mr. Garrett Morgan forming the Cleveland Call for thus just that specific reason. Garrett Morgan, who invented the traffic the invented light, of the traffic light. The whole world. And old early gas masks and several other inventions was having a problem getting his story told and he created his own paper and we keep that legacy going today. Uh -huh. So how do you celebrate 100 years? It is going to be a year long extravaganza. We invite the whole community, the whole state of Ohio, all of Cleveland to celebrate with us and we will be doing galas, golf tournaments, summits. Mm -hmm. We will be part of the RNC. We are celebrating the entire year. It's going to be an exciting time for the Call and Post. Rhonda, this is more than just a newspaper, though. We're talking about a, a voice yes. in the community, uh, sometimes a voice that was not heard, as you said, through the mainstream mm -hmm. media. Speak on that a bit, little bit. And I, I see it as really um, a place for young writers to get their start. You got your start there as a, a young reporter. For me, it was the first place where I was able to come and start finding my voice as a writer. So that's, to me, that's what I think about when we think about more than just being a newspaper. It's a place for young professionals to come and get their first start in, uh, in writing or photography or as a sales rep or mm -hmm. in business. It's, to me, I see it as a um, training ground yeah. for young professionals. Yeah, when I was in college, I was 20 years old, and I was home for one summer. I still had college to do in my junior year. And I and W. O. Walker, who was the owner and publisher of the Call and Post at that time, he, the late W. O. Walker, gave me a job. And he says, "Young fellow, we're gonna. In fact, if you want to come back here after you graduate, you certainly may. But it certainly set me up for journalism. Mm -hmm. And the Call and Post is very much a vital part of my D N. A. It is in me. That's what you want others to feel, especially those young reporters yes. that, that, that you hire over uh, at the Call and Post. Yes, we, we welcome all young reporters, anybody looking to be a part of journalism, mass media, come to the Call and Post. And we're reclaiming all people. We'll reclaim you. Leon, if you want to come back, you know I'm always, you, we I'm have a seat. There. We have a seat for you. I, I may have to write a commentary or there or write a column. I or will something. be talking <laughs> to you about that. We'll talk about that. This is exciting time, though, isn't it? it? For, is. Yeah, for for it for is. the entire staff. Yes. Yeah. You're looking at some heavy-duty stuff now yes. here at the city, the city that we've had some protest demonstrations going on. We've got the consent decree in our final minute. We've got the consent. The consent decree that that's been handed down by the Justice Center that the city of Cleveland has agreed to. So the call and post delves into this because of its racial implications, correct? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's exciting for you still? Yes, it yeah. is. You have to put out a paper once a week? Every week, every yeah. Tuesday night, we go in knowing that we have to be there if it takes us to 5 o'clock in the morning to get that paper out, that 
you know, we cannot allow it to not come out yeah. on our watch. Yeah. In our final 30, 30 seconds, it's, it, it's hard work putting out a weekly. I know it's hard putting out a daily, mm -hmm. but it's equally hard putting out a weekly, isn't it? It is, it is hard work, but it's a labor of love. And again, we've all pulled together as a staff, uh, myself, Rhonda, James Wade, Felicia Haney, everybody in editorial work extra hard to get the paper out. We really hold that title, The People's Paper, seriously, and we, t we don't take it for granted. And we want people to subscribe to The Call Please and Post. Please subscribe yes. to The Call and because Post. Because we, we need the readers. It, it costs money to put out a paper. And advertise as well. Advertisers as well. Kevin Chill, her general manager of The Call and Post, and Rhonda Crowder, staff reporter for The Cleveland Call and Post. Many thanks for being on the broadcast. Thank you. Celebrating 100 years. You weren't here at the beginning no. of it. When it in began. spirit. <laughs> in spirit. You were here 100 years ago. Correct. So was I. In spirit 100 years ago. Thank you for being on the broadcast, and we wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a break right now. In a moment, we'll return. Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League will offer some thoughts after this. Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League and the Morning is Changed segment of Kaleidoscope. Always got something on your mind? What's on your mind today? Well, I'll tell you, Leon, uh, it can't help but have on my mind what's going on, been going on in our city recently around the consent decree that the Department of Justice and the Cleveland uh, Police Department uh, have entered into. And what's really on my mind is it's so important that now we turn our energies towards really supporting as a community that consent decree and determining how we can help to change the culture of the relationships between the police and the community um, and turn that whole situation around. So that's been a lot on my mind lately. Because the Justice Center, Justice System, uh, yeah. Department of Justice in Washington says we've got to change. The yes. city of, a, of a Cleveland has agreed to change. Absolutely. So there is an agreement. There is an agreement. And I just received today an article about the change in policing that happened in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I, I read that article in great detail today, and it really provides a lot of lessons learned from how things turned around in that city. At one time, uh, the National Urban League Conference was to have been in Cincinnati, right. and they pulled it because the police relationships were so bad. So we've got to do the right thing because Absolutely. we want to keep business here. Absolutely. We want to keep everybody happy here. Absolutely. As much as we can. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got to pull together as a community and get behind this and, uh, and help to change the culture of what's been happening. Many thanks, Marsha, for your words of wisdom. Thank you, Leon. Let me tell you that we're working on a brand new set here. Perhaps you notice it. This mm -hmm. is our new digs here on the Kaleidoscope <laughs> broadcast. Yes. We've got a new set built around us. We hope you like it. We certainly like it. We have tried to make it comfortable for our guests, like yes. Marsha. <laughs> it certainly is comfortable for me. Thank you. Good to have you on the broadcast. Good to be here. Good to have you Thank with you. us. I'm Leon Bibb. Be well.